Put your hands up. No. What? I said no. Why not? I don't want to. But I've got a gun. I don't care. It doesn't make any sense. Too bad. Well, where are your friends? I don't know. Yes, you do know. No, I don't know. You do know! Shoot me, then. What's going on, YouTube? This is your boy, Memphis X, and I am coming to you again with another video. Yes, two in one week. We are going to talk about, as you can see on the thumbnail, that crazy, crazy 3 and D guy, Vince Williams Jr., and the Grizzlies win against the Pacers at home. I was in the building. We are going to talk about it. at the end of that shot. Well, down 19 points. <laughs> Giving it to the wrong guy. As you can see in those videos, you saw Vince Williams Jr. getting into it with C.J. McCollum against the New Orleans Pelicans. That great comeback. And unlike everybody else, that wasn't my first clue that Vince Williams Jr. might be a little bit Touched in the head. Yeah, I am talking about he might be a literal psychopath. On the court, of course. I can remember back when the Grizzlies played the Phoenix Suns and they had Vince Williams Jr. guarding Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant and the Grizzlies were getting it pretty good. And this was so out of place. The Grizzlies were losing. Kevin Durant was kind of having a decent game. But Vince Williams Jr. had this smile on his face. And I'm not talking about just being happy like, you know, like the DeAnthony Melton smile where you're just happy and you're a nice person. I mean, he had the Joker smile, the I the shit-eating grin smile on his face. Like, he knew something nobody else in the building knew. And I, when I looked at him, I said, that guy might be a little bit touched. And ever since then, he has become a staple with this Grizzlies team. It's been short and quick, but he looks like one of the 3 and D guys that we have been hoping for. And last night, he did not disappoint. Now, he was 1 of 5 from the field, 0 of 3 from three-point line, four rebounds, three assists, three steals, one block. He did have two turnovers. He was plus 14, second only to Ja Morant among the starters. And he only had two points. But he put the clamps on Tyrese Halliburton. And it, if you watch the game, you notice that Halliburton – could not get a shot off hardly against him, and damn sure couldn't hit anything on him. It was some great defense on a guy that everybody has been kissing up to all season long. He's been killing everybody all season long, even led the Indiana Pacers into the in-season tournament championship game against the Lakers. He was killing it, but – this is not the only person that Vince Williams Jr. had put the lock on. He did the same thing to Luka. He's done the same thing to C.J. McCollum. Put, shut him down in the second half against New Orleans. Uh, he has just been a phenomenal point-of-attack defensive player. And I can tell you, and I tell every team, everybody I can talk to about the NBA, 
that the one thing that a team needs to be great is they have to have that elite point of attack defender. I don't care who it is, how it comes about, but without that, teams can get off on you. And when we were not playing Vince Williams Jr., our defense suffered because we were getting, the Grizzlies were getting too, getting too hurt by point of attack attacks, warping the defense and getting everybody into rotation. So it was good to see that that was over with. But like I said, we now have the second game of John Morant. The Grizzlies are 2-0 and with John Morant in the lineup. John Morant had a pedestrian for him, 20 points, 8 rebounds, I mean, eight assists, five rebounds, seven to 16 from the field, one of three from the three-point line, five or six from the free throw line, and all six of those free throws came in the fourth quarter. Um, Jaron Jackson had a dominating first half. He had 16 of his 21 points in the first half, and I think Bain might have 22 of his 31 in the second half. Bain was missing so many wide-open shots in the uh, first half. But in the second half, he hit those shots, ended up 11 of 26 from the field, five of 12 from three-point line, seven assists, six rebounds, a steal, and a game-high 31 points. Santi Aldama had a good game. Zaire Williams had 16 points in 18 minutes. He looks like he is revised playing with John Morant, John Conchar had a momentum changing block shot, a momentum changing block shot. When he blocked Benedict Matherin's shot, I'm not going to say it was a block. When he destroyed Benedict Matherin at the rim, it kind of changed the momentum back to Memphis and it kind of gave them the push that they needed to go ahead and finish the Pacers out. Like I said, I was at the game. It was a fun game. I really, really enjoyed myself, and it was great to be in the grindhouse again. Can't wait to get back in there to see the team again. But they're going on the road, so we got the Hawks on Saturday before Christmas, and then we're going to New Orleans again to play the Pelicans, who should want revenge for that embarrassing collapse they had against the Grizzlies in John Morant's season debut. Like I said, let me know what do you think about the eighth psychopath, Vince Williams Jr., and how great he is or how great it has been to have a guy on a two-way being a key starter for your Memphis Grizzlies. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will come back to you with another video.